Before we begin, I'd like to ask your opinion. As I grow older, I find that I am growing more gray hair. And my wife insists that it's very becoming and it's cute and it looks very nice. And I can't help but think every time I see gray hair that I'm looking at like another dent in the hood of my car. <laughs> That's how it feels. And they say that gray hairs are the mark of wisdom. Hopefully that is the case. Because when we look at the world, we look at our lives, there's nothing more natural than a young man who is ambitious and proud and uh, you know, unwilling to see reality and to see only, I can do anything I want, right? Like James and John in the Gospel today. And at the same time, there's perhaps nothing more perplexing than an elder who exhibits those qualities who should know well better. When we're young, we think, there's nothing that I can't do. So we get a little bit older, we start to think, well, I'm going to have to make some decisions on what I'm going to be able to get away with. And then as we get older, then we start to think, what can I get out of? And so when we look at the Gospel of St. Mark that we heard today, think about what you're hearing. Christ himself is saying, okay, it's time. I'm going to go to Jerusalem and suffer my passion, and I will be betrayed, and I'll be given up, and I will be condemned to death, and I will die. This is a stark reality, the reality of mortality that we all face. And yet, what do James and John, the youngest guys, right, the, who are called, still called by their father's name, the sons of Zebedee, you can even see, kind of see their mother coming up behind them. Go, go, ask them something. <laughs> and their response is, uh, yeah, 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 Jesus, but tell, would you do us a favor? Can we be at your right hand and your left hand? Like, they totally miss the whole thing. They totally miss what he just said. I'm going to go and be killed. And it's going to be bad. It's going to be rough. It's going to be difficult. Yeah, yeah, okay. But can we be on your right hand and your left hand in your kingdom? Are you able to drink the cup that I will drink and be baptized the way I will? Will you be able to drink death and be baptized in the earth with me? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. I can do it. No problem. They don't, they don't realize what they're saying, do they? And that's what the Lord says. You don't know what you're saying. Brothers and sisters, this is uh, the way it is with youth and with age. As we go, we grow. And as we grow, we start to realize how profound what Christ did was and how he suffered for us. But we also learn to have to go through it ourselves. Because he says, indeed, you will drink the cup that I drink. You will be baptized with the baptism. That is to say, if you become a Christian, and even though you are baptized with Christ and you put on Christ, we ourselves are not to escape the difficulty and the struggle and the challenge of life. We still have to face the realities of gray hair sooner or later. And if we are young, then we have to suffer. And if we pass from this life in youth, we must know tragedy, which is just as painful. And so today we also commemorate St. Mary of Egypt. St. Mary of Egypt began her life, as all of us do, as headstrong and young and proud. And at the age of 12, she was so proud and so into what she thought she could do and what she wanted to do that she ran away from home and lived a life, a prodigal life, a very sad life. Until finally, at the age of about 29 or so, 17 years after she ran away from home, maybe she was starting to get a little gray hair, who knows. But she was clearly oblivious to what her life had become and how far it had fallen. And by a miracle of God's grace, she was awakened when she tried to enter the church in Jerusalem and the Lord himself, by an invisible hand, blocked her from entering and forced her to stop and say, 
what is, what is going on with him. He brought her to self-awareness and self-knowledge. And that's really what wisdom and maturity and humility are all about. St. John the Ladder, in his Step on Humility, speaks at great length about self-knowledge, almost synonymous with humility. Because the older we get, the more we become aware of the reality of who we really are and what we, what we really amount to. And then we grow, hopefully, because of that, in humility. If we don't, we fall into despair. We fall into anger and resentment and bitterness. Because there's some part of us that is still acting like that adolescent kid and wants things the way they were or that they never got to be. So St. Mary recognized that she came to self-awareness, she came to humility, and she repented and she mourned for her sins and she left that life. But here's the important part, and this is why I love this story, because it's honest. It wasn't like that day she just turned around and went back to Egypt and said, I've turned over a new leaf and I'm going to be fine and everything's going to be easy from now on because I've corrected myself. It took her another 17 years to undo the damage that she had done in the first 17 years of sin. And that's really important to remember. But she didn't become St. Mary of Egypt overnight. <coughs> she repented, and then she repented, and then she repented, and repented, and repented, and the rest of her life was an act of repentance. She didn't just get it all right for the first time. And she says in her confession, after all of this had taken place to St. Zosimus, who encountered her in the desert, she said, I can't even, I don't, I tremble to tell you of the challenges and the difficulties I faced after my repentance. How I suffered and how I struggled, not just trying to live a good life, but with the memories of the past. How so often the memories of my former life came and haunted me and tried to drag me back in. How I remembered all all the pleasure that my body experienced and that my soul was wallowing in and how I wanted to fall right back into it. How she said, how body songs would come back to her memory. We all know those body songs. We all remember those. We all heard those growing up on the radio and how they can come back to us in our memory at an inopportune time, maybe even during church, right? And it wasn't easy. St. John, when he speaks of humility, he also connects it to repentance in the morning, describing them as like a holy trinity. And that's to understand something about the process of, of spiritual life. And hopefully you're experiencing this during Great Lent, because Great Lent exists for us to begin doing this kind of work and this experience. Repentance is, first of all, stopping what it is that you were doing wrong, turning away from sin. Mourning is once you realize what you had done, you look and see the mess that you've made, and you clean it up. You wash it away with your tears, and you begin to heal the injuries. And humility is the wisdom that you gain from the experience of doing it. The self-awareness of how easy it is, and how powerless we really are to do good in this life. During Great Lent, this is our column. This threefold column: repentance, mourning, and humility. To grow in self-awareness, because we have cleared away the wreckage of our past, we have begun to salve the wounds that we have caused ourselves and others in our life. And if we are not doing that work, and we are not growing in self-awareness, then when we are old and gray-haired, we will sound like a ridiculous teenager, and people will wonder. Did this person learn nothing from life? Did this person never grow except in body? Do we want to be like that? Do we want to end our days like a petulant teenager? A proud, headstrong adolescent? And for those of you who are young and adolescent, don't feel bad. You're exactly the way you're supposed to be. And you'll learn. Be open to the learning process. That's all we ask. Don't be closed-minded.
because the Holy Spirit will talk to you and speak to you in your life and for the rest of your life in your life. Through the prayers of our Holy Mother, Eve, Mary of Egypt, the Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen.